Okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's go now. Here we go. Okay, here we go. <coughs> <coughs> Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. The Sacrament of Confession is kind of a big deal for me. Not only was it the place where I first encountered the Lord Jesus in, in, a, in a powerful way that like changed my life, literally uh, gave my life a new horizon, set it in the decisive direction in the words of Pope Benedict. Um, I just, I love, you know, as a priest, you know, I always tell our students this. I say that the best two questions a priest can ever hear are, Father, how do I become Catholic? And secondly, will you hear my confession? And so it's just, it's incredible. So years ago, when World Youth Day was in Poland, uh, there's a woman I work with, her name is Heather. And Heather had gone with a bunch of our priests and a bunch of our seminarians, a bunch of our youth over to World Youth Day when I was in Poland. And she came back, she told me all about this saint, the patron saint of confessors. And his name is, uh, here's the, I'm going to butcher this. His name is St. John Nepusamin. He's from Czech Republic back in the 14th century. And he is, and there may be a couple different priests who are the patron saint of confessors, but she was like, Brother Mike, I know how much you love confession. You will love St. John Nepusamin. <laughs> We put his name on the bottom. I'm not sure what we'll do. But it just, I was like, man, what, 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 is, what is this guy's story? Like, what makes him the patron saint of confessors? Is it that he had, he could read souls? Is it that he was, you know, gifted with this amazing insight? It, it was that he offered incredible counsel? Was he like St. John Vianney and he, and he was a prisoner of the confessional, right? He was there 16 hours a day. That's St. John Vianney. 16 hours a day he was in the confessional. Like, what is it about this St. John in Czechoslovakia in the 14th century that makes him the patron saint of confessors? The answer is, well, not only was he a personally holy individual, not only did he do whatever the Lord asked him, he did what his bishop asked him to do. At one point, he was made the confessor to the queen uh, there in that, in that area. And her husband, the king, was not a very good man. And at one point, he became very jealous of his wife. And he demanded that St. John tell him, the king, what his wife's confessions were. And St. John absolutely refused because there's such a thing as the seal of confession. And because he refused, he was, he was tortured. Uh, he, was, he was, before he refused, he, they, the king said, if you refuse me, I will not only torture you, I'll kill you. If you tell me what you heard in confession, I'll make you rich beyond your imaginings. St. John refused to say. And so the king ultimately killed him. He threw him in the river and drowned him. That's what makes St. John Neposimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
even if he just kind of like hints at it, I mean, like, I mean, indicates it like not with words, but like, you know, points, <laughs> you know, kind of a situation, uh, gestures and whatnot. If he even does, he is automatically excommunicated from the Catholic Church. The priest is. That's how seriously the church takes the invitation to trust in Jesus' mercy. Yes, here's the priest who Jesus established as, as that one who can be the minister of reconciliation. But we're going to the Lord. It's God who forgives. It's Jesus who forgives through the ministry of the priest. And so the church says, okay, in that case, priests, you may never, you may never reveal what you've heard in confession, even at the cost of your own life. That's why St. John Nepusamin is the patron saint of confessors. And not because of any great skill of his, not because of any great gifting of his, but because he respected the privacy, he respected the secrecy, he respected the sacredness of this sacrament. Now, here's one thing to note. I remember at one point I was teaching RCIA and uh, there's a, a gal who was very, you know, she, she was, um, she asked questions. And one of the questions was, so is it true that you can never reveal what you heard in the sacrament of confession? And I, I got, you know, I was, I was younger. I got all excited. Like, I think I thought I knew what her, what her, what she was looking for, which was like, yeah, absolutely. You can have complete confidence in the Lord, complete confidence in the church. No one, the priest will never, ever reveal. But she thought, she, she saw that and she said, that's horrible. You mean someone could confess to you that they've done something horrible and you would never, you would never tell, you would never say like, and she saw that as an injustice and it was actually a big turnoff for her. Maybe even this is a turnoff for you. Maybe it's one of those things that actually, uh, you think is a problem. That might be the case. I'll say this. That might be the case with other people's sins. Like truly, that might be the case when you hear about someone else who's gone to confession and they've laid down at the Lord's feet through the ministry of the priest, um, their, their, their most shameful thing, their, their worst thing. It's an obstacle when it's someone else's sins. But when it's our sins, it's necessary, right? When it's our sins, it's a stepping stone. It's no longer a stumbling block to, to seeing the goodness in this. It's no longer a stumbling block to seeing the necessity of this. When it's my sin, I realize, oh my gosh, I need to be able to trust in God's mercy. I need to be able to have absolute and complete confidence that when I lay this down at the foot of the cross, through the ministry of the priest, he gives me absolution and I can walk away free, completely free. You know, there's this program that Ascension has created for First Reconciliation and First Communion uh, Prep. It's called Renewed and Received. And I think... I don't know how you were introduced to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Maybe it was really scary. Maybe it still is really scary. But one thing we want to communicate uh, to the, the kids who are going through this preparation as well as to their parents is this truth, is that on the outside, I don't know, on the outside, confession looks a lot different than it is on the inside. On the outside, it might seem like, well, I can't believe you wouldn't say. On the inside, it's like, oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that the priests don't say. On the outside, it might seem really intimidating, scary, and like the worst thing ever, like the one most depressing moment in my life. On the inside, this is encouraging, right? In the inside, this is a moment of hope. On the inside, this is the best moment of my life because this is the moment that I was dead and now I'm back to life. This is the moment that I was lost and now I've been found. And this is what God has for you too. Not just for kids who are going through this renewed and received program, but for every one of us. Realize God's mercy is for you. And it's so, so full, so, so abundant that it stays in confession, thanks to the seal of confession. I'm pretty grateful for that myself. Anyways, Moralvis here to Sense Presents. My, presents my name is Father Mike. God bless.